click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russ here. Welcome back to my chemistry videos. And today we're going to do a question that involves converting skeletal formulas to expanded formulas, not a problem. All right, so these are pretty simple questions to do as long as you know the rules. Wherever, one, wherever lines terminate, that's a carbon. Wherever two or more lines come together, that's a carbon. Carbon always obeys the octet rule, which means carbon must have four bonds. Okay, let's do it. Very simple. Right over here. Wherever lines terminate, that's a carbon. So there's a carbon here and a carbon here. You got this right. Wherever lines terminate, carbon. Wherever two or more lines come together, it's also a carbon. Wherever two or more lines come together, that's a carbon. Now, carbon has to have four bonds. If nothing else is drawn on your molecule, those bonds are assumed to be to hydrogen because in the skeletal formula, the hydrogens bonded to carbons are not shown. Hydrogens bonded to other atoms are shown, but hydrogens bonded to carbon are not shown. So, this particular carbon has one bond. One bond. Has to have three. So they must be to hydrogen because nothing else was shown. Same thing over here. This carbon only has one bond, so it has to have three more. Those three must be to hydrogen because nothing else was shown. This carbon, one, two bonds, has to have four, so it needs two more. They must be to hydrogen. Same thing here. One, two, needs to have two more. One, two, has to have two more. One, two, again, has to have four, so two more. One, two, has to have four, so again, two more. There you go. Now, if you wanted to draw it out in a linear fashion, you can. One, two, three, seven. Okay, well, I made up these questions, and I made it really hard for myself. Two, three, four, five, seven. There we go. As you can see, this is quite gangly. It's not, it's not pleasant to look at. It's also not pleasant to draw. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, three, two, 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 two. I'm not going to bother counting it. It's good. It's, it's good. If it's not good, leave me a comment below. Tell me how wrong it is. It's fine. I'm not going to bother counting them. As you can see, though, this is not fun to look at. But it's important that you know that this and its skeletal formula mean the same thing. Okay, Let's do this one, a branched uh, alkane. Very, very simple. Again, remember, where lines terminate, that's a carbon. And where two or more lines come together, that's also a carbon. So there you go. Now remember, carbon has to have four bonds. This one only has one. This one has two. This one has three. That one has one. This one has two. This one only has one. They have to have four. So this one has to have three more bonds. And they must be to hydrogen because if nothing else is drawn, hydrogen is assumed. This one has two hydrogens. How do I know? It has two bonds already. It has to have four. Two more to hydrogen. This bad boy right here, one, two, three. This one already has three bonds. It has to have four. So give it one more. Down here, this carbon has one bond, has to have four, so give it three more. And those bonds are always to hydrogen unless something else is drawn. This one, two bonds, so it has to have two more to hydrogen. This one, only one bond, so it has to have three more, and those have to be to hydrogen because, unless otherwise indicated, those carbons are bonded to hydrogens. If it's something else, say a chlorine or a bromine or an iodine or something, you have to draw the iodine in. So let's uh, write this out. One, two, three, four, and five. And on carbon three, there's a CH3. And as you can see, just with these few carbons and hydrogens, things are already getting difficult to draw and difficult to read on your end. Okay, so that's how you convert that one to the expanded formula. Now, I hope 
that you're watching enough video and doing enough problems where this is becoming second nature to you because this is never going away. Skeletal formulas are here. Organic chemists love them because they're easy to draw. And once you get the hang of it, very easy to interpret, but you have to work at it a little bit to get there. So with that, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, slap that like button, leave a comment below. Let me know how I can help you in your particular organic chemistry class. And if you could, please share my content out with your friends. Let them know that I'm around and it could be maybe helpful to them as well. That would be really awesome. And if you could, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really does help me as a creator to stay excited to make more and more content. And also, it lets you to know that my videos are helpful to students and I may get recommended to more and more people uh, as time goes on. So with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbetts at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.